news you can use. Got some a couple of interesting items to discuss. But before that, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and raise your hand. Um, we'll give you a couple of minutes to find the raise your hand button at some place on your screen, typically upper lower right side, or maybe with those three dots. And if you can't find that and you have a question you want to talk about or ask and or something to talk about, go ahead and hit us up in the chat box. Just put a note there that you'd like to speak and actually will, uh, when your turn comes, go ahead and unmute you. Um, okay, two pieces, two items of news. First of all, yesterday, Fox Business News predicted that we are within 30 days of a balanced market. A balanced market means it's no longer a seller's market or a buyer's market. It is basically a 50-50 market. There is as many people wanting to sell as there are as buyers wanting to buy. It has been historically a seller's market, which means um, that there are fewer sellers and many more buyers. But because of what's happened here recently, uh, a lot of buyers have backed out of the market and a lot more, frankly, a lot more sellers are coming onto the market. Um, and it looks like we're within either at the end of this month or by the end of next month, I think sometime after that, we'll see data that will show that we are in most communities in this country at a balanced market. What's that mean for you guys? Well, I'm glad you asked. Basically what that means is that you're going to have a lot more opportunities to buy more properties at a better negotiated, cheaper price and potentially better terms than you would have um, two, three, four or five months ago when all of this news was flying around about, you know, 187 people overbidding on some house. Um, those, those days are almost gone. There are still some communities where that's the case, um, but a balanced market is where you want to be. Uh, a perfectly balanced market, if we get to that point, basically means that it is good for both the sellers and the buyers. And so that, that's going to be an awesome deal. Now, I would suggest that uh, when it gets to that point, we'll keep you guys advised of how this is going, but when it gets to that point, that you would really focus on sharpening your pencil and getting a better deal uh, because there'll be more sellers out there than there is now. And now there is more sellers than there was a month ago. Um, and you'll have a better opportunity to make profit if you can get it a little bit cheaper. Because once we hit parity in terms of buyers and sellers, the next step is, you know, you will find that there's more sellers than buyers out there. And when that happens, um, there is a possibility that what you bought it at today, let's say a price right here, by the time you get around to cleaning up the house, fixing it, selling it, whatever, the price may have dropped. And so, and I've been in a number of these cycles and markets, um, and that can be a real nail biter if you're not careful. So that's uh, one thing. Once again, we'll keep you guys advised and apprised of how all these things uh, are coming down the pike, but look at that to, to equal parity here soon. Um, second article, a, the Urban Institute has uh, given out a study and this deals with FHA loans. FHA loans are essentially, as you guys, most of you know, they're government backed loans that are designed to help primarily first time home buyers uh, or lower income folks get a home uh, with a smaller down payment. Now, typically conventional loans will require a 20% down. Uh, FHA loans can be had for as little as 3% down, uh, but there are dollar limits. And the FHA, when I started in this business was probably half of the loans were FHA government backed loans. Uh, the last from 17 to nine, uh, 17 to 19 to 2020, approximately 20 up to 24 percent average during that period, 22.8 percent of the loans were FHA. They've gone down dramatically because some of the programs that lenders have come out with have allowed for lower down payments along with poor private mortgage insurance, and it's a better way to go. Last month. FHA loans combined, the whole group, Ginny, Fannie, Freddie, all that, down to 10.3%. Um, why is that? Well, they polled um, a, a number of loan brokers and 
uh, people in the in the industry uh, as to why this has gone down. And there's, there's several reasons. Um, first of all, government loans require property inspections. If you sell a home and your buyer is using a conventional loan, frequently you don't need to have an inspection. Um, or it's informational only. You don't need to do a repair. If you have a government or FHA loan, um, they're, they're there to detect, the inspections are there to detect things like uh, risks such as lead-based paint, falling roofs, appliances near, that are nearing the end of their useful life. Um, and in many cases, if the appraisal comes in less than the agreed upon price, the FHA and the VA will require that you as the seller drop your price to meet the appraisal. Uh, if it doesn't happen, they'll insist that you do this list of repairs of things that have turned up on the, the FHA uh, VA inspection. And so sellers have just said, or they've learned over the last year, especially this year, you know, basically fooey on that. They're not gonna deal with that junk anymore. They're, they're just rejecting and this is one of the reasons we're not getting a lot of overbid stuff. They're rejecting, as a group, they're rejecting the vast majority of FHA-backed loans. Now, we can all argue the societal implications of that. You know, it, it tends to reduce people, uh, first-time home buyers, to buying homes, and it tends to favor people who have higher down payments, more cash, that type of thing. Um, but the bottom line is the... I believe the FHA loans and the VA loans, unless they make some dramatic adjustments to their program, these guys are gonna be the, the dodo birds of this deal. They're gonna be extinct in very short order because they cannot keep up with um, you know, the, the regulations that don't exist, the non-regulatory environment of a conventional loan, a non-conventional loan, somebody who's just getting a regular loan from a bank that type of thing, which now make up 90% of all loans. So that's good for us as sellers, because, and frankly, if you have a choice, I would reject an FHA VA loan because they've not changed their loan criteria since I started 20 plus years ago in this business. And they are draconian. I mean, and it, there's downstream effects of these inspections, not just you may have to drop your price, but things like it takes much longer, almost twice as long to close an FHA loan. There's a lot more paperwork. It will cost you, in addition to more time, it will cost you more money. Um, and I would just you know, unilaterally reject, unless it's your only option to sell a house, if you're selling for, you know, a, a, to a buyer with a loan, um, I would reject those loans uh, as well. And so I think at some point, either the, the federal government will uh, turn the, and this is what the Trump administration tried to do. They tried to get the FHA back out of government hands. Remember, this, this used to be private. Uh, the FHA was a, a private quasi-government private entity, but it was essentially controlled by the private sector. The uh, U.S. government nationalized them in 2008 when we had the Great Recession and kept them in what was called receivership, which has been ruled, I think, illegal by the Supreme Court. Um, but they are still under government, federal government receivership. And I think it's time for that to go the other way and get back into private hands, in which case they may remove some of these draconian rules that are in existence out there and, and make it uh, more favorable so that more folks can get, uh, you know, low cost uh, government loans with low down payments. I don't think it's going to happen in the short term, but I would uh, be careful when you sell a house to make sure that if your buyer is using a uh, VA loan that you either reject it if, or if that's your only case, you're going to have to accept it. So if you have two, two buyers, equal price, very similar price, or even one might be a little lower, but it's a non-government loan, I would look seriously at taking that offer instead of the government back stuff. So that's it.